Hey Ben, so I want to go over the first play that we're going to install at the midnight practice, uh, which is East Strong 88 reach. The opposite of it would be West Strong 99 reach. I want to draw it up out of East. I'll also draw it up out of a couple of other formations we would introduce. And I'm going to go over the whole play as far as what all the positions do, but I'm specifically going to take the time when we talk about the tight end, which is going to be your responsibility. And in the midnight practice, when we go to that pod period, you're going to have the tight end and the wing to work with on their portion of this play. So let's get right into it. I'm going to try to be as efficient as I can. If you have any questions, obviously let me know. So this is our East formation. Actually, this isn't quite accurate. For East, we would probably have our jet back right about here. Here's what each of the players are going to do. And again, I'm going to go quickly through everybody except for the tight end. The wide out in our slot are running a pattern that's called a bubble. This is an RPO, and that means that if the quarterback gets up there and the quarterback sees that the defense has not put at least two players over here, he's not going to run the play. He's just going to throw the pass over here to see if we can get an easy five yards. Piece of cake. Our jet back leaves early in motion. And he's going to take the ball from the quarterback. And he's trying to run wide. So this is just an outside play. So we use this play to set up everything else. Again, it's good for you to know. But that's not going to be what you're teaching. Up front, these five guys, we have our open tackle and our open guard not block anybody on the line of scrimmage. The reason we do that is that if we run this jet properly, uh, a tackle here and a defensive end here are never going to catch the ball. So we don't even bother blocking them. Center is kind of the same rule too. The center's got to snap the ball. That's his main job. If he manages to master that, we're going to ask him to step to that gap button. If there's a defensive tackle in this gap, unless he's really, really jumped the snap, he shouldn't be able to get to this jet. Um, okay, my other two guys, the strong guard and the strong tackle. The strong guard is going to pull, and he's going to do what we call a skip pull. And he's going to look to come up this alley and seal to the inside. Our tackle is going to down block. He blocks anybody between him and the center, kind of forming a wall. This guard also, by the way, if anybody penetrates right up to, say, through here, like a blitzing linebacker, that guard stops his pull and blocks that person. Tailback is going to come out here and hook the first defender from the sideline in. Or, if you can't hook them, block them wide, and our jet cuts in it. Quarterback, after the handoff, takes a boot out here, and with Mason Harmachuk, um, we keep this because, well, he's just playing better than most defenders. So we actually have two very, very effective and easy plays there. But let's get to your guy. Let's talk about what you need to be able to do. Specifically, you're in charge of the tight end. Now, the tight end can do a couple of different things on this play. For example, if this tight end gets a defensive end lined up head up on him. We ask that tight end to give an on call. On, on, on. So he'll yell to the wing, on, and his job is to double team that player with the, with the wing. So we're going to use two players on one to ensure that we have that edge when the jet comes around. So that's the first thing that you're going to need to be teaching. When you break into your pod period, you're going to have the tight end of the wing, and the first thing you're going to be doing is working the double team. Now, we don't always know if the player's going to line up there. If that player doesn't line up head up, but instead, let's say he lines up here in the gap, we don't want to double team on that because that's a waste of a player. 
we would want the tight end to down block him by himself. Remember we said we are going to talk about that? That's a down block. And then this wing would go to the second player from the sideline in, who is probably going to be a linebacker right about here. No guarantees, but we think. Okay. I guess there is even one more scenario. We could see this. This rarely happens, but if they were to put the end here, outside of the tight end, first thing, we shouldn't be running jet at that point. We should be running inside. But if that were to happen, we would have the wing block him by himself and the tight end go up to the linebacker. But for Sunday, what I'm going to ask you to start with is I'm going to start with the two scenarios of where the tight end and wing have to double team. That means guy lined up here. Or the scenario where the end plays inside here. And the tight end would have to block him by himself and the wing would have to go up. And again, you're just teaching it, right? You can have them hit against bags if you want, but we aren't having anybody hit full on. So that's East 88 strong reach. Now, we're going to introduce something else too. We're going to introduce this same play out of what we're going to call East Flex 88 reach. And flex applies specifically to the tight end and to the wing. So you have to be comfortable with this. Here's how the formation changes for flex. The tight end splits out five yards. He is still on the line of scrimmage and he is still in his three point stance. The wing plays on the tackle just like he was the tight end. So you see this different formation we have now? This plays havoc with defensive ends and corners. It's not something they're used to seeing. This is our flex. And here's how the play changes. On flex, this tight end has an unconditional down block. He doesn't have to think there's no call. He is going to be blocking down on whoever that last man on the line of scrimmage is. And the wing folds over him to the number two player. Think of it like they're not double teaming. If we were in East Strong 88 reach, me and the tight end here and the wing here, if there was not a double team call, that tight end would have the end man and the wing would go to the number two man from the sideline in. That's all they're doing here, but we're just doing it in a little bit of a different formation. This is a good formation for this play, because if we hit quickly, again, that tight end doesn't need to kill the defensive end, he just needs to wall him off. If we do that properly, then we get the tailback taking number one, we get the wing taking number two, and then we still have our guard coming around as well, and we've got our jet. And to make this even more fun, check out what we can do, Ben. And again, remember, think about Mason Harmachuk here. We can run this with the jet over here, forcing the defense to put three players over here and just do a direct snap to the quarterback, and the quarterback runs the jet. With a kid like Mason, that means we have got numbers on the defense, and that's a good, good play. Okay, so what do you need to know about 88-99 reach? It's our outside plays. The tight end, if he's not flexed, has to make a call for a double team or not. It's typically on or off. If he's flexed, five yards out, we are going to fool around with this on Sunday. That tight end needs to block down on the Ambrose all by himself. Again, this will be on the kids' wrist coaches, but you really need to know it because in the pod portion, 
you're going to be in charge of the tight end and the wing. Okay. Let me know if any of that was confusing.